Welcome you to the coach training for Starry Starry Night. I am Susan Ogden, and I have been uh, supervising this event for many years now. I can't tell you how many, maybe about 10. Um, and I know this event can be a bit daunting, but we've got some really good resources for you uh, that I think will make you feel a lot better. And I am going to share my screen here. Okay. So this year, our topic, our overall topic is the uh, solar system and the non-planetary members of the solar system. This event is on an every other year rotation uh, other, uh, the other, like next year and last year, uh, was, um, the, was deep space topic. That was our special topic along with telescopes. This year we have missions in place of telescopes. Uh, as far as the non-planetary members of the solar system goes, it's just things like comets and asteroids, dwarf planets, and some specific moons, uh, that the kids will have to know about. Um, this event, if the kids really grab onto this and enjoy this, they can continue doing this in junior high and in high school. In junior high, the event uh, is also on a rotation between solar system and deep space. And high school is mostly deep space. Um, but the topics change every year, the specific topics like this year, they're studying exoplanets. So uh, should be interesting if the kids enjoy that. All right, so let's look at the rules for a few minutes. So you'll want to have two kids for this event, if at all possible. Uh, they're, the tests are long, and they're going to want to divide and conquer. Uh, one person can take the test and do well. Last year, I had a girl do the test by herself at region or at uh, the regional tournament and she won a, a medal so it is possible but it's better if you have two students overall uh, so the test um, is going to consist of a variety of question formats true and false multiple choice matching fill in the blank short answer they'll have to sketch a, a diagram or two uh, and I always tell the kids, we're not looking for Van Gogh. Uh, we're just looking to make sure that they understand a particular concept. Um, you'll want to look at our website, macombso.org, and I will show you how to get to our STARS page in a couple of minutes. So every year we have questions about the general solar system. And to help you with that, there is a glossary on uh, the Macomb website, a couple of glossaries actually, on the Macomb website this year. Uh, they will also have to understand orbital mechanics, so rotation and revolution. How do we get our uh, concepts of day, month, year, um, and how they do relate to the periods of the Earth and the Moon? Uh, they will have to understand the causes for the seasons on Earth, the tilt of our axis as we travel around the sun. Uh, they will need to identify the phases of the moon and understand why they occur. And the phases are going to be the eight basic phases, including things like waxing and waning and um, you know, rather than half moons, uh, the waxing crescent and things like that will be, uh, the kids will need to know. They'll need to understand eclipses, solar and lunar eclipses, why they're produced, um, the differences between the two. And then this year they will have to uh, know some of the characteristics of the planets. I will not ask them numbers, you know, how was the mass of the earth or, you know, how far away 
is Mars from the Earth? I will not ask them things like that. Uh, generally, it'll be relative things about the planets, like which planet has the longest day or the longest year, uh, which has the widest temperature of variance, um, relative size, things like that. And they will also have to um, be able to recognize pictures of the planets as well as a few pictures of uh, planetary features um, on, each, on each planet. And we have pulled a selection, uh, and I will show you those in a little bit, that the kids will, that I will pick from to show them, uh, and you won't have to go outside of those particular pictures. I will give you everything that I might possibly use on a test. For part two, this is uh, star charts and the celestial sphere. Celestial sphere, they just have to know a few terms that are listed there in the rules. Um, but then they have to know the constellations. They have to be able to identify if I give them a star chart with a particular constellation uh, circled, they will have to tell me what that constellation is. If I uh, point to a particular star or star cluster, they will have to be able to identify that. And we'll talk more about the star charts briefly in a few minutes. Um, then for part three, this is where the non-planetary members of the solar system come into play. Um, they will need to understand the differences between meteoroids, meteors, meteorites, and then understand comets and asteroids. For example, where do they come from? Um, where, are, where can we find asteroids? Where do the long period comets come from? Where do the short period comets come from? Things like that. Um, they will have to know specific dwarf planets, and there are a few that are officially recognized as dwarf planets that they will need to um, be able to recognize in a picture, as well as uh, know their names, what might make them unique, where they are, things like that. Uh, then we'll talk about moons, and I've listed there the specific moons um, because, you know, Jupiter and Saturn have, you know, 70, 130 moons, that kind of thing. I have picked a few specific ones that I think are interesting. Um, they're interesting visually. Some of them are interesting because they may contain life. Um, so those are the specific moons that the kids should be aware of. Then there is the topic of the outer solar system, where they need to understand what the Kuiper belt and the Oort cloud are, and then what's in between the planets. Okay. Um, and then they also, again, will have to visually identify in a slideshow on the test the dwarf planets and specific moons and things like that. And then we have our space missions. There are specific space missions that are posted on the website that they will have to uh, recognize based on a description of the mission or a list of important findings from each mission. And these will be tested in a matching exercise. Uh, the questions are one, two, or three points, depending on the difficulty level. There will be about 65 questions and about 130 points, give or take. Uh, specific tiebreaker questions will be listed on the test, and those will be um, a little more difficult, maybe worth four or five points, and we only look at those if there is a tie. So trying them will not hurt the kids if they get them wrong. In fact, for the whole test, they don't get negative points for anything they get wrong. They only get positive points for everything that they get right. Um, all right. 
So I want to show you on Macomb's website where you can find us or you can find our page. So our address is macombso.org. And then you go to the elementary tab, click on events. And then along the left hand side here, find Starry Starry Night. And then this is our page. So you can find the event rules here. You can find all kinds of good information that I'm telling you about today. Um, this is the uh, coach training handout that I'm going through today. And then we've got all these other good materials for you. Um, as far as the pictures go, I have posted on this page all the pictures that the kids will need to know. All right, so pictures of specific planets. Here's a feature on Mars that they will need to know. Um, then we've got moons, dwarf planets, okay? So these are the pictures that I will choose from when doing the, um, the um, slideshow, sorry. So what happens during the slideshow is we do this all together during the test. It's the very beginning of the test. And we run through each of these pictures for 20 seconds. And then we run through them again at the end for just a few seconds each so the kids can grab something they might have missed the first time or just check over their work. And then they can get on to the rest of the tests. Um, let's go back to the handout here, see where we are. So the test, um, as I said, is going to be uh, multiple formats. There is a test template posted on the website. And you're welcome to look at that and see kind of how we lay the test out. You're welcome to use that also if you'd like to develop your own tests for the kids. Um, there will be about 10 to 15 multiple choice questions, um, probably about the same number of uh, short answer questions. Um, there will be two matching sections, and one will be on the missions, and the rest will be glossary terms. And the simple diagrams the kids might be asked to draw might be things like uh, a particular eclipse. Draw the sun, moon, and earth and their order in, in a lunar eclipse or something like that. Or draw a specific moon phase. Um, so those are the kinds of things the kids will have to draw. I do have a brief quiz posted on the page. Let me show you that. That will give you an idea of the, of what I consider to be easier questions and then more difficult questions. Okay, so for example, when looking at revolution and rotation, a simple question might be the scientific term for a planet's trip around the sun as a multiple choice, okay? A much more difficult question where three points would be name a planet that rotates in a retrograde motion. So one, they have to understand what retrograde means and then understand which planets rotate that way, okay? so. I've got each topic, I've got a question, I've got two questions that tell you, okay, so here's a waxing crescent moon, um, and that's a more difficult question where they have to know what a waxing crescent is and then also draw it. Um, but an easier question would be, in what, phase of the, in, in what phase is the moon when we can see its entire face lit up? Hopefully they would all know that that's a full moon. Okay, so this will give you an indication as to um, what I consider to be easier questions and hard questions. Okay, let's talk about star charts.
and you can find the star charts on our Macomb page. You don't have to create these. You can create them on your own. And um, I get them from a website called heavensabove.com. Uh, but I've created them for you, so you don't really have to do that. So when you click into these for each month, here at the bottom of the page, you can see uh, this, is pr this particular one is January 15th, 2024. They're all on the 15th of the month, and they're all on uh, at 11 p.m. Okay, so we'll have three star charts for each month. So this is January, 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 and then February, February, February. Uh, so this is where you'll start teaching the kids the particular constellations that we need to know. Now, these are all the constellations in the sky in January, um, but they only have to know a subset of these. All right, so this particular chart has all the lines, all the constellation names on them, all right? As they learn these uh, constellations, then you'll want to flip to the second chart, which has no names. So you can start to quiz, start to quiz the kids on whether they know the names of the constellations. And then this is the scary one with no lines either. This is what they will see on the test. All right. So. This seems scary to us, but you'll have one of the two kids that just loves the star charts. Uh, that's what I've found uh, usually. There's one kid that just, you know, this is their thing. So we will have a box around, for example, here's Orion. We'll have a box around Orion, and they will have to tell me that this is Orion. They will not have to draw the constellation lines in but they're welcome to do that if that helps them figure out where they are, what month they're in, things like that. There are certain um, constellations in the sky all year. They're called the circumpolar constellations, and they're things like Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Draco, Cepheus, Cassiopeia. All right, so these are in the sky all year round. So you might start with these and show them kind of how they move around the sky uh, through the year, what they look like each of those months. Um, you can also do their, you know, mnemonic devices. You can do um, speed to spica and arc to arcturus and, you know, Google these things and you'll find ways that the kids can learn you know, depending on what they recognize in the sky, what the next constellation is, you know, how they can get to the next constellation. I also want to note that um, the kids should not give answers like the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper. They'll need to specifically say Ursa Major or Ursa Minor. Um, the Dippers are, um, they're called asterisms and they're just a piece of the constellation. So I'd like them to understand the, the true names of the, of the entire constellation. All right. Let me go back to the rules. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Back to the event coach training. Okay. Um, as I say, the tiebreakers will be at the end of the test. Uh, in any of the question formats. Um, I might, if there's something happening in astronomy, a current event that's happening in astronomy that is relevant to our topics this year, I might include a question like that. So you might want to keep your ear open for anything happening. Uh, if there's a particular mission that has launched that's on our list this year, things like that. Um, but the, in general, they won't be current events. They'll just be uh, more difficult questions on the topics uh, that we have this year. Uh, the kids are always happy to learn that spelling doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, as long as we can figure out what they're going for, we'll give them the points. And there are no notes that they can bring into the room. All they can bring in is a pencil. When you get to junior high and high school, sometimes you can bring a reference note page 
or sometimes you can even bring a binder in. And as, uh, actually with the astronomy event in high school, you can bring a computer in and have all of your files uh, that you can access on your computer. But for this test, all they bring is a pencil. They can talk with their partners. They can pull the test apart. So one of them gets working on the star charts while the other one's doing some of the other uh, sections of the test. Um, that's a coaching decision that, that you can make, but um, I recommend that the kids actually divide it rather than going through each question one by one together. Um, at practice tournaments, so every one of you is in, invited to one of the practice tournaments. There are three practice tournaments um, and they are listed on the website also. And you will not receive the test back at the, after the practice tournament, but you will receive a feedback sheet with your kid's score on the various topics. Oops, let me show you what you will see. You'll get this, okay? So I've listed all the topics on the left-hand side, and I've listed the points that that topic uh, can get on that particular test. And this is just a, a reference. It's not gonna be exact. But then I will list the kids, the scores that your kids got here. So you'll be able to see, oh, we did great in the planetary moons, but oh, we need a little more work on constellations, um, that kind of thing. So the practice tournaments are in March. So that gives you another couple months to then target um, your teaching so that you know kind of what you need to work on for those couple of months before the main tournament. Okay, so that is what you will see. All right. So uh, our goal is not to be tricky and, you know, to confuse and trick the students on the test. We will be as clear as we can. We want to give them as many points as we possibly can. Um, all of the information will be found in all the in the resources that we're giving you. So back on the Starry Starry Night page, a couple of the other things that we have for you. Um, there is a list of resources, useful online resources right here. This is the list of the resources that I am using. Okay, it looks like there's a lot there, but some of them are just one page and, you know, there's not a lot to them. Um, but these are the resources that I am using to cre create these um, other resources that I'm giving you, as well as to then write the test. All right, so this will be good for you to look at. The internet is a huge place and um, you can get lost in the details of astronomy, but know that this is, these are the particular sites you should be looking at, okay? Uh, in addition to that, we have, um, oh, the mission list uh, that is on here. Um, and then we have a selected topics. Okay, um, well, let me show you the mission list. All right, so we've got 12 different missions, um, starting with Sputnik, the first satellite, and um, ending with Psyche. Okay, so there's a few, um, you know, there's a paragraph on each one of these that the kids will need to recognize. Um, if I describe this particular satellite, some of the, or, or mission, sorry, some of the um, findings from that mission, they should be able to match the uh, findings with the particular mission, okay? Um, so we also have the solar system selected topics. This is a PowerPoint where I have given you a place to start, okay? So 
here are key concepts. And this pretty much follows the rules, okay? And then I give you specific things. For example, how many Earth rotations or how many days in one revolution around the sun? Um, how many times does the moon revolve around the Earth in one revolution around the sun? All right, we have a couple of slides on um, the seasons and why we have seasons. All right. Um, and something interesting to note here, uh, you, the uh, orbit of the Earth is not a perfect circle, and sometimes we're closer to the, sun, to the sun than others. And you might expect that summer would be when we're closer to the sun. It's not. We're actually farther away from the sun in the summer in the northern hemisphere. It just depends on the tilt of our axis. So fun fact for you there. Um, and then we have the phases, the particular eight phases of the moon that the kids need to know. All right. And kind of, I like this diagram. It uh, shows you how the moon looks uh, if you were above the top of the moon and then how the moon looks from the earth. And you can see that the moon keeps its same face to us all the time. Just what we see of it changes. Uh, then we'll have a few eclipse pictures, a um, little bit of information on the different types of eclipses, lunar eclipses, a um, little bit about the sun. Since the sun is in our solar system, there might be a couple questions on the sun. How a solar system starts. And then here's some selected planets characteristics and I will remind you I am not going to use these numbers but I might do a uh, relative you know how does earth compare to Jupiter as far as density or something like that okay um, and then here is a more explicit list of the kinds of things that they would need to know about the planet characteristics little bit on celestial sphere and the particular uh, terms that they need to know. Constellations, the different tricks to um, figure out where they are on each star chart. This is just a representative sample. Asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. If you don't go beyond this page, you'll probably be pretty good on this topic. Okay, this is pretty much everything that you need to know about the asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. All right, between the, the, these two pages, actually. Okay. And then we've got, um, oops, we've got three pages on that. Then we've got the dwarf planets, the particular five dwarf planets that we're going to study. And characteristics of the dwarf planets, whether they have moons or not. And then the particular moons that the kids need to know in our solar system. All right. And then a little bit about the outer solar system, the Kuiper belt, the Oort cloud. All right. And a few other terms heliosphere, heliopause. All right. So I hope that this gives you this, uh, this deck, PowerPoint deck gives you a good place to start on each of the topics. All right. And then use the um, other other things on our website to um, continue, you know, the useful resources to continue studying for Starry, starry night. Um, are there any questions? You can open your mic or you can raise your hand or you can say something in the chat. All right, I'm going to stop sharing here. All right, so does anybody have any questions? I covered a lot of material here, but hopefully I've given you everything that you need.
Oh, uh, tell us about the workshop. So there's not a Starry Starry Night workshop this year. Um, there are things like rocks and um, I don't know, a few others, but um, we are not doing a Starry Starry Night workshop this year. Last time we gave one was probably five years ago, and we may do it again in the next couple of years. Any other questions? Hi, is there going to be a replay of this? Uh, this is Sorry. recorded. Yeah, this is okay. recorded. So you will be able to access this recording online anytime. Where do we go to get that? Uh, you'll go to the Starry Starry Night page and you can give us a week or so to get it okay. uh, uploaded, edited and uploaded. And uh, that should be available in the next few days. OK. All right. And then just I actually registered for the workshop. There was a um, I don't know how, but it said that there was one. Oh, there is a workshop that I'm not putting on. Yes, there is a workshop. Um, the Metro Park workshop, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, I don't have anything to do with that. So I don't know exactly what oh. they're what they're um, they have the copy of our rules. So I'm assuming okay. that what they present will be relevant. But okay. I I don't have anything to do with that workshop. Sorry about that. I forgot that was happening. OK, I was like, I don't know what I registered for then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I should know about that, shouldn't I? Uh, but I don't know specifically what they'll be presenting, but uh, it's likely going to be worth your time. OK, the okay. Metro Parks do a great job. OK, good. All right. Yeah, sorry about that. Anything else? Okay, I think we'll call it quits there. Thank you very much for attending and I hope we've given you what you need to go forward. Um, if you have any questions through the year, use the FAQ system uh, and you can find that on the Starry Starry Night page at the bottom. Uh, you can submit any question that you want. There are a few questions already posted there. I will respond and then post the answer on the website so that everyone can see the answer. So be sure to look at look for those FAQs throughout the season. Okay. All right. Thank you very much and have fun.